Now class, picking up where we left off, we had negative 35 over 60 plus 18 over 60. Now, we have we had common denominator, so we'll write our common denominator. We know 35 is larger than 18, so we will take the sign of the 35, which would be negative. And 35 and 18, when you subtract them, gives you 17. So our final answer is a negative 17 over 60. Now, we scroll down here to problem number 9. We have 8 minus 2 and 5 sevenths. So let's, let's write this vertically. Have 8 minus 2 and 5 sevenths. Now, with this problem here, we need a fraction here because in subtraction, if we have a fraction with our bottom mixed number, we must have a fraction with our top mixed number. Well, with our top number here, which happens to be a whole number. So this 8 will actually become 7. Now, the one that we borrow from this 7 has to have the same denominator as this fraction here. So 1, so one written with a denominator of 7 will give us 7 over 7. So this 8 becomes 7 and 7 over 7. So now, let's rewrite this. We have 7 and 7 sevenths minus 2 and 5 sevenths. Now, 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths is 2 sevenths, and 7 minus 2 is 5. Now, if you want me to explain this again, let me, let's go back over it. I'll write it one more time. We have our 8 minus 2 and 5 sevenths. Now, we have to have a fraction here, so we borrow one from this 8. That gives us 7. Now, we look at the denominator of this fraction here. And the one that we borrow, its fraction will have that denominator, and that is the numerator. Because 7 and 7 sevenths is the same as saying 8. And then we'll rewrite it. It'll be 7 and 7 sevenths minus 2 and 5 sevenths. 7 minus 2 is 5. 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths is 2 sevenths. Same exact answer. Okay, number 10. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to line this up vertically. 31 and 1 eighth minus 17 and 2 fifths. Now, this is what happens. We need to find the common denominator of 8 and 5. Since I need extra space, I will use this extra space up here. So we have 5 and 8. 5 is already a prime number, so we bring it down. 8 breaks down to 2 times 4, and 4 breaks down to 2 times 2. So the prime factorization of 8 is these three 2's multiplied by each other. Now we look and see if they have anything in common. They do not. So the least common denominator is all of these prime numbers multiplied to each other, which will give you 40. So down here, our common denominator would be 40. So we carry over our 31, our minus 17, and our denominators would be 40. Okay, like we did earlier, these 40s, we will break them down like so. We would take the new denominator, which is 40, divided by the old denominator, which is 8 here. 40 divided by 8 is 5. So we would take this 5, and multiply by this 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Now, we take the new denominator, which is 40, divided by the old denominator, which is 5 here. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So we would take this 8 and multiply it by this 2. 8 times 2 is 16. Now, we cannot subtract these fractions here as we cannot subtract 16 over 40 from 5 over 40. So this causes us to have to borrow. So let's rewrite this down here. So we will have our 31 and 5 over 40 minus 17 and 16 over 40. Now we have to borrow one here. We borrow one from this 31 that becomes 30. Now watch this. 
we still have our minus 17, 16 over 40. Now, we will have 30 for our integer. Our denominator will stay 40, so now we must find the numerator. Now, I told you all before, the one that we borrow, we look at the denominator here. The denominator here is 40. So we will take 40 over 40, which, which is 31 will become, it'll become 30 and 40 over 40. And we will add it to this 5 over 40, which will give us 45 over 40. Now, there is a simpler way of doing this. And I told you all this before. We have our 30, which we carried over here. Now, the one that we borrowed to find our numerator, we could just take this denominator plus this numerator, and it gives us this numerator here. So 40 plus 5 is 45. Now, we subtract. 45 over 40 minus 16 over 40 is 29 over 40. And 30 minus 17 is 13. And that is our final answer. Okay, now we come down here to problem number 11. We have six and a half times three and a third. Six and a half becomes, well, our denominator stays two, and our denominator here stays three. But six and a half becomes 13 over two, because six times two is 12, plus one is 13. Next, we have three and a third. Three times three is nine, plus one is 10. Now remember, we could write out the prime factorization of these numbers. We have 13, which is prime, and we know the prime factorization of 10 is 2 and 5. Now in our denominator, 2 is prime and 3 is prime. So we simplify out what they have in common, which is only these 2's. So we have 13 times 5, which is 65, all over 3. I remember I told you, if the directions ask you to write your final answer as a mixed number, or it starts off as a mixed number, we must write our answer as a mixed number. So we would take off to the side 3 into 65. 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, and we bring down our 5. 3 goes into 5 once. We will subtract 3, and we will have a remainder of 2. So our final answer, the integer would be 21. Our denominator would be 3 and our numerator would be the remainder, which is 2. So it's 21 and 2 thirds. Now we go here to number 12. Now first of all, we know a negative times a positive is a negative. So this is what we would do. We would take the prime factorization, we would write our negative here, and take the prime factorization of 15, which is 3 times 5, prime factorization of 12, which we know is 2 times 2 times 3 from the previous problems, the prime factorization of 16 is four twos, which we know from a previous problem, and also the prime factorization of 35, which is five times seven. Now what we have here, we have two twos that are similar. We have a set of fives here, and that is all they have in common. So your numerator would be negative nine, your denominator would be 28, and and we cannot do anything else with number 12. So now we come down here to number 13. We have division. Okay, we keep this first term the same, or this first factor the same. Division becomes multiplication, and we take the reciprocal of this second fraction, which will give us negative 25 over 6. Now we know a negative times a negative is positive. So we're going to do the prime factorization of 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2, and the prime factorization of 25, which is 5 times 5. And our denominator, the prime factorization of 15 is 3 times 5, and the prime factorization of 6 is 2 times 3. Now, these 5 simplify out, these 2 simplify out. So now 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20 and three times three is nine. Now, we could leave this as 20 over nine or we could change this as a mixed number. Just depends on you. But just, um, let's just say for argument's sake, you wanna change this to a mixed number. We would take nine into 20. Nine goes into 20 twice. 20 minus 18 is two. So our remainder would be two. 
So our answer here would be 2, our denominator would be 9, and our numerator would be 2. So it's 2 and 2 ninths. Now we come here to 14. 3 and 3 fourths. Our denominator stays 4, and our numerator is 15. Because 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15. And that's divided by 10, but we'll put it over 1. So our first fraction stays the same, which is 15 fourths. Division becomes multiplication, and we take the reciprocal of the second fraction, or we flip it. So we take the prime factorization of 15, which is 3 times 5. We don't have to write the times 1. And our denominator prime factorization of 4 is 2 times 2. And the prime factorization of 10 is 2 times 5. Now all they have in common are these 5's here. So our numerator would be 3, our denominator would be 8. So that's number 14. Now we scroll down here to 15. It says an 8 minute egg is cooked for what fraction of an hour? So what we need to do is to change the hours to minutes. Now we know it's 60 minutes in an hour. So we'll take this 8 minute egg and divide it by 60. And we could take the prime factorization of both of these. Prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. And the prime factorization of 60 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Now, we have two sets of 2's that they have in common, and that's it. So your final answer would be 2 fifteenths of an hour. And that would be your final answer. Okay, now, 16. It says, when shopping at the grocery store, Mars noticed that a 24-pack carton of juice had eight cans missing. Now, if it's 24 in the pack and eight cans miss, missing, that means we had 16 left in the pack. It says what fraction was still in the carton. So 24 was the original amount, and we had 16 left. So now we take the prime factorization of 16, which is 2 times itself 4 times, and the prime factorization of 24, which is 3 twos and a 3. So we had three sets of twos in common. So our final answer is two-thirds is the fraction still in the carton. Okay, now we scroll down here. We got number 17. Online you found a recipe for chili con queso. Its ingredients are, we have one and a half pound Velveeta cheese, one cup favorite salsa, and one fourth cup milk. You want to make one fourth of the recipe. How much Velveeta cheese should you use? It says one fourth of the recipe. So that'll be one fourth times whatever the recipe calls for. The recipe calls for one and one half pound of Velveeta cheese. So now we change that mixed number to an improper fraction. So that would be 1 4 times 3 halves. Now we multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's 3, three eighths pounds. And that is your answer. Now number 18. If a sandwich is cut into 12 equal parts and 2 thirds of it is eaten, how many pieces of the sandwich were eaten? So it's 2 thirds of it is eaten. So you would take 2 thirds times 12. Now, we'll put this 12 over 1, and we could do the prime factorization. We have 2, which is prime. Fi prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And then in our denominator, prime factorization of 3 is 3. And we don't have to write the 1. These 3 simplify out, and you will be left with 8 divided by 1. So your answer is 8 pieces were eaten. And that is your answer. Now, we scroll down here to problem 19. Now these are the type of problems that you would get partial credit for on the exam. So first we do what's inside parentheses because we have to do our order of operations. So we need to find a common denominator of 6 and 2. 